Hi, I'm Clint Taylor, the company's Taylor Decoys. Live in Ogdensburg, New York, right up on the Canadian border. And what I'm going to do here today is show you how I make a cork Canada goose. I know a bird is relatively round in shape, and I get asked quite often, how come I don't make my decoys round? Reason being is ducks and geese have two little stabilizers attached called feet, which keep them upright and not moving back and forth. A decoy doesn't have that. With a flat bottom in the water, there's more space to hold that bird steady from going side to side. You're basically making a boat that's shaped like a duck or goose. What I've done is I've drawn an X on the bottom of the head in the neck area where my dowel is. When I put that head on the cork, I took those marks and replicated that cross and drilled the, the hole for the dowel into the cork body. What I'm going to do is I'll glue the dowel into the head and for a temporary hold, I'm going to use hot glue to keep that in place while I finish shaping. Then I can take the head off, put a second dowel into the front of it to keep it from spinning, and we'll permanently attach that to the body. Okay, we're all done assembling, carving, sanding our decoy. Now it's time to take it over to the paint shop and seal it and paint it and get it ready to hunt. What I've gone ahead and done is put a base coat of color on. I put some white on the rump, some medium to dark brown on the body, and some black on the head. You might be able to tell that there's been some texturing put on the wood head. Uh, that helps me just transition and, and prevent the surface from being real flat and shiny. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna start marking feathers on the side, the side pocket of this goose. And as I get towards the chest of the bird, the feathers get smaller. All I'm doing is putting a little bit of paint on the end of those bristles, just drawing them forward. You don't have to be super exact and follow this. The less you concentrate on it, the better it will look. It won't look quite as rigid and uniform and oftentimes feathers will look scaly because people will want to lay them on like shingles. Okay, you can see now the outlines of the feathers that I put in. I, they don't look like feathers at all right now. They're just a little outline, but with a couple more different colors on here, they'll look like feathers in no time. And as you can tell, this is a pretty light color. and it's left at its lightest on the breast and towards the belly. People may oftentimes spend too much time trying to get an effect that if they loosened up their technique and didn't think so hard about it and worry so much about it, they'd get much better results in a much shorter time frame. Okay, I've dried the sides. Now I'm going to take a, a darker tone, darker color, and go on this edge of these feathers to try to give that a little bit more depth. I'm just pulling that out a little bit. Use less and less of this real dark color near the base as that whiter edge and that band 
becomes more broad as it moves forward. What I'm doing is putting feathers in now in areas that either the, the feathers look like they're too wide apart or it's a real unnatural look to it. The biggest pointer I can give to somebody who's starting or has been at it a little while but doesn't do it professionally is not to worry what other people think about how you paint, what your shapes are, how you carve. Make what you like and that's going to be better by far than anything that you will do trying to please somebody else. Make what makes you happy, be, paint it the way you like it, it'll turn out that much better.